Hey guys, happy Wednesday. Hope everybody's doing well out there. Uh, in my last video, I covered how to update from uh, Portainer 1.24 uh, up to two. Uh, and that video did really, really well. And thank you guys for that. I really do appreciate it. Uh, one of the things that popped up uh, repeatedly is that in version 2.0, they no longer allowed the use of templates. And a lot of people use templates uh, just to make deploying containers easier. So uh, in this video, because uh, Portainer uh, 2.0 doesn't allow for templates, I want to show a few different ways that you can still use uh, templates or something similar to templates uh, to deploy containers faster and easier uh, without having to go through the process of using stacks or whatever the case may be. So let's jump over to my desktop and take a look uh, at a couple of options that you've got if you want to continue to use templates on Portainer 2.0. Okay, so here we are on my desktop and uh, this is uh, my main home server. Uh, this is uh, this this is what my, my family uses for everything. Uh, this is uh, my, my big server. Uh, this one is currently running uh, 1.24.1. Uh, this is uh, the, the version that is stable. Uh, this is the, the, we'll call it the old version, classic version. Um, but if we come up to um, app templates, uh, here we can see that there are a bunch of templates in here. Now, by default, uh, this comes with uh, a few in there, but if you wanted to add more, you can just go to settings, uh, scroll up and, and check, use external templates to on, and then put in your JSON file uh, for where you'd like your, your, your templates to come from. Simple enough. The problem is if we come over here to uh, Portainer 2.0, uh, we go into settings. Here we can see that, um, that we've got app templates set up here, um, but you'll notice that there's no option up here to use external templates. Um, so I'm not sure what their uh, what their goal there was, but uh, again, if we come over to here and we go to app templates, here they are. This, again, this is on 124.1. If we come over here to version two and go to app templates. There's nothing there. In fact, up here at the top right, it even says unable to retrieve templates. Uh, so let's take a look at a couple of things that you can do in order to use templates. Uh, the first one is actually using uh, a third party uh, solution like we've talked about in the past. In fact, I even did a video about this in the past. Uh, this is Linux servers uh, Tyson or Tysoon. Um, and then all we've basically got to do is come down here uh, to this Docker compose, copy this, we're gonna come back over here to our uh, 2.0 server. We'll go to stacks, click on add a stack. We'll just paste this in here. Uh, we'll give it a name, uh, 3000. Uh, I don't think I'm using anything on 3000. So we'll click on deploy the stack. So we'll give this a minute. And then once it's deployed, we'll come back and take a look. All right, so now uh, Tyson is uh, is deployed. So we'll come and open this. Uh, here we can see it's on port 3000. Let's take a look at the logs. Okay, so it says uh, services.d is done, that's good. Listening on uh, port 3000, that's also good. So what we're gonna do is just click this. There we go. All right, <clears throat> so now we have uh, our Tyson uh, container up and running. Uh, and then what we can do is come over here to stacks. Uh, we don't have any stacks running and that's absolutely true. Uh, I've only got the one container running. So I've got Tyson and Portainer. So that's absolutely correct. We can click on fetch stacks. Um, and this is everything that we have available. Um, to uh, go ahead and install on our system here. So uh, let's go ahead and do, let's do Heimdall. So we'll click over here where it says configure and launch. Before I go and do that though, just understand there are three pages. Oops, that was, I clicked on page one there. Uh, but there are more pages uh, where you can uh, scroll through and find uh, even more, uh, or you can come up here and you can search Heimdall just like that. And we can go to configure and launch. Okay, so the stack name we're gonna give it is uh, Heimdall. The port, I'm gonna call it uh, 3001. Uh, I'm gonna say S, oops, SRV slash uh, Heimdall. Uh, for this particular system, I know that my UID is 998 and my GID is 100. And uh, then we've got uh, my, uh, my time zone there. So we'll go ahead and click on create. We'll let this go ahead and do its thing. I love that it shows me uh, the process that it's going through in this virtual terminal window where it's uh, pulling and extracting and doing everything. I love that it shows me this. Uh, I really wish the Portainer did this. It doesn't. Um, so that's what's cool about here. Uh, this is very much like running it in uh, an SSH terminal or something like that. Uh, so now it says uh, creating Heimdall is done. So we can click close. Then if we come over here to stacks, we can click open. Oops, okay, so let's see if it's gonna give us any kind of logs or anything. Uh, logs, 
All right, so right here it says, in fact, it tells us it's creating an app key. This may take a while on slower systems. Uh, the little system you, I'm using right now is a four core Intel Celeron with four gigs of RAM. Um, so it may take a little while. So we'll go ahead and let this do its thing. Um, and then once it's done creating the app key, uh, then we should be able to come back over here and uh, relaunch this app. Okay, so we've given this, I think, plenty of time to, to make sure that it's created everything it needs to create. Uh, so let's go back and take a look here and refresh. There is Heimdall installed. And of course, we can come over to here. Uh, we can add, uh, we just call this uh, pie hole, for instance. And we can go here. Uh, that's great. Uh, all of this is good. The URL, uh, we can say HTTP, uh, Bruce Banner local port 3000 and uh, save. And if I click that, Okay, guys, there you go. There's the first option. Uh, that's installing Tyson or Tysoon, uh, kind of as a workaround to uh, using application templates in uh, Docker and Portainer. Uh, again, that's just the first option. Uh, we're gonna take a look at an, another option here in just a second. Uh, this is an early alpha. Uh, I wouldn't use this uh, currently on a production system. Uh, what we're gonna take a look at next is something called Yacht. Uh, I've been uh, chatting with the guys developing this. Uh, it's come a long way since it first started. Um, but like I said, it's still in a pre-alpha state, uh, so definitely something to keep an eye on. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Yacht. Okay, so this is Yacht. Like I said, this is pre-alpha. I've been talking to the guys developing this. We're only gonna touch on it briefly as an option to get around uh, the, the application template uh, issue uh, because I want them to be able to release their, their first big video on this uh, when they're ready. But I just wanna know, or want you to know that this is another option as well. Uh, so basically this is Yacht. What we're gonna do, we're gonna do this through uh, through an SSH command. So we're gonna open up uh, putty or whatever you prefer. I'm gonna type in uh, tanix.local. Uh, of course, I'm gonna drag this up just like I always do. And I'm gonna type this in, I'm gonna put in my password. Uh, first thing I have to do is uh, create a volume called yacht. So we've done that. I'm gonna copy this uh, like so. Uh, it wants to run on port 8,000, but Portainer already runs on port 8,000 for some of its stuff. So I'm changing it to 8,001. Uh, everything else in here uh, is very, very basic. Don't need to adjust anything. So I'll go ahead and click OK. All right, so it's pulled everything. It's deployed everything. Uh, so what I can do now uh, is come back over to here. I can change this to, uh, oops, port 8001. And there are some credentials here, which you can see is admin at yacht.local. And the password is pass. Uh, so we'll go ahead, oops, and come back over to here. Uh, we'll do this and we'll type in pass. View templates, nothing. So uh, we will go ahead and click on add. Uh, we'll paste that in there and we'll type in uh, yacht and then we'll click submit. And then if we come into here, here are all of the applications that are available in here. Uh, this is actually uh, the, the same template that I used a couple of months ago when I did the video about uh, deploying 81 apps from just a single click. This is that same JSON file, but instead of using Portainer or, or Tysoon, uh, we're using a, another third-party Docker container called Yacht. Again, this is pre-alpha, definitely worth a look. I wouldn't advise using it in, uh, in a production scenario, but this is a second option you can use to uh, if you want to use templates in uh, Portainer 2.0. So like I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna show you a third option. Uh, this one is kind of a cheat, it's a workaround. Uh, what we're gonna do is actually downgrade from 2.0 back to 1.24.1. So uh, this is actually pretty easy as well. Uh, so we're already logged into our, uh, for our little dev server here. I'm gonna type in clear just to get rid of that. I'm gonna say docker stop uh, portainer. And then I'm gonna say uh, docker uh, rm portainer like so, and then uh, that should stop and remove our portainer. So if I come over here and click refresh. This should fail, this is perfect. So uh, we could, if we wanted to, uh, continue to use an SSH command here uh, to uh, just create uh, a new version. Uh, we could just do this and uh, we could, and so it's created our portainer data uh, folder here. And then what we could do uh, is just run this other command and I will have this available. Uh, like so, and then we can just click run. Uh, so now if we click on uh, control R to refresh, uh, that error message is fine, nothing to worry about there. There we go, and now we're logged back into an old version uh, so that you can go back to using stacks, or not stacks, um, but templates and that sort of thing. Uh, the other option that we could look at here as well, if we wanted to do this, we could say uh, uh, docker stop portainer uh, Docker RM portainer. Again, so if we refresh here, 
Uh, this should fail. So then what we can do is log in. Oops, that's not right. Oops, no, that's, wow, having a minute here. So we can log back into Open Media Vault, uh, go over to, to Extras, go to Docker, no, no Portainer container found, Portainer install. We'll give this a minute to do its thing here. All right, so that's done. So now what we can do, just like we did before, go to port 9000, click leave. Uh, we'll say admin and my password, like so. And there we go. We're back on our, our old version of 1.24.1. So like I said, this was just meant to be uh, to kind of show some different ways that you can still use templates on Portainer if you've already upgraded. Uh, we looked at Yacht, we looked at uh, Tysoon or Tyson. And then we also looked at downgrading from 2.0 back to 1.24.1. So you've got some options if you still want to continue to use templates. Um, I do believe that uh, 1.24. whatever, uh, right now it's one, uh, but I believe they're going to continue to update this particular version for about the next year or so. Uh, but but 2.0 is coming, so it's definitely something to prepare for. I just wanted to give you some options on things you can do uh, kind of in the meantime. So I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. It would help me out a ton. Uh, also, if you're interested in supporting the channel, uh, like I said, uh, everything that I talked about in this video will be linked in the description below but there will also be a coffee link, which is like a one-time tip jar, as well as a Patreon link uh, where you can uh, become a patron. Uh, currently, there are uh, four levels at which you can subscribe. Uh, the three, five, and $10 levels will give you early access to my content when it's available, but the five and $10 levels will also give you access to a patrons-only Discord server where we can hang out, chat about whatever you wanna chat about. So uh, hopefully, again, you found the video helpful, uh, and hopefully I will see you guys in the next video. But with all that being said, I'm gonna get out of here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.